Good morning, Jules fans, and welcome back to another edition of Jules in the Blood TV. Um, myself and Boz um, doing our Monday review, having a look back at Saturday. Um, desperately digging and trying to find any sort of positives, but we're struggling at the moment. Um, I'm going to just have a little chat in general about everything that's sort of happened in the last few days. Um, we will warn you now that this might go into full ramp mode. It's not going to be a nice chat. It's we said after the game immediately, didn't we, that we would, we're done. Um, I think we're praying for a bit of a miracle now. Well, I don't know what your thoughts are. Well, I do, but I'm going to let you tell everyone else. <laughs> what, what can you be positive about? Exactly, there's nothing at the moment you know, at all, is there? Every week we're, we're fighting, we're doing this, we're doing that. No, we're not. We're not at all. It was, it was two poor teams, and at the end of the day, they wanted it slightly more, and they've got nothing to play for. We're, we're the ones fighting. Yeah, it says something in one of the papers this morning that um, I think it's here. This is the this is Sunday's edition of um, the Football League paper, which we, we purchase every week just to have a look through. Um, that's your headline there. Junior has come of age for the posh. Um, there's obviously not a lot. Um, there's one paragraph that, that literally sums it up perfectly. The match was a quintessential nil-nil for 90 minutes. Desperately short of quality and with a paucity of chances at either end between two teams lacking in confidence. Um, it then goes on to talk about Marais' late winner um, and obviously mentions that it keeps their slim playoff hopes alive. But I can't see it. It's they, very, very slim. They strolled around in the sunshine <coughs> on a spring afternoon for 90 minutes thinking, well, like it was a friendly. Well, they had a very nice day out, let's be honest. Um, the, we spoke in the match day live, didn't we? And there was rumours that Tafazoli was day outfall, yeah, which would have been a big miss for them. Did he play in it? I don't think he did, did he? No, no, no so he didn't Baldwin play. And, uh, Boswick, Boswick, who I thought was it. very, very good and someone that we could do with proper proper centre back, just edited everything, cleaned everyone out if anyone was near him, and he put it in. The, he got it, got rid of it, got away from the danger zone. Um, I'm not going to talk about that shit. Um, so that was one. Ryan Tafazoli missed out. Uh, Guionic, uh, yeah, Edwards. he missed out. He's got nine this season. And Tom Nichols went off injured after a quarter of an hour. I, I'm not, I don't want to sound rude, but they bought on the who scored the winner, so that just sums us up. He was about four foot high. And wide. Did not look was, like he belonged on a football pitch. He looked so odd. Fair was, play to him. It was very good for I him. think I mentioned in the ground. He had no neck. He was literally head, torso, arms, legs. Didn't have any shoulders. Didn't have any hips. And then... Generous Gillingham. Generous Gillingham. There we go. That's what we're going to be called. Um, <clears throat> and I, I listened to the Last Walks podcast last night, and uh, I think it was Reese described Chris Hurd as a whale. Uh, Boz has just described Ollie Muldoon's little um, break dance <laughs> um, for Peter as winner. Flapping about like a salmon, wasn't that it, was mate? Fun, so we're turning into a team of fish. Um we're all going a bit delirious and a bit mental, aren't we, I think, because this season's just been so draining and horrible and frustrating and heartbreaking and whatever you want to call it. Um, but we're going off on a bit of a tangent here. But um, in all seriousness, we had, we've had we just spoke about it before we come on air. Three shots in the whole game against a team that just, I think, would have just let us play if, we, if, we, if we'd actually... I think I read that we had 13, but three were on top. I don't remember 13. 13 shots? <clears throat> It's in one of the papers. Thirteen shots. Bear with me. Target. Bear with me. We are going into the Medway Could Messenger. Be up there somewhere. Don't they do a stats thing? Yep, it says we had three shots on target and ten shots off target. Got nothing. Okay. Got nothing. The three shots that I can remember were. Harry Cornick, when he came on after half time, he that cut inside from the target, left and think, it went it? wide. Then again, he had the one that broke from in the box and he smashed, I think I nearly caught it. Yeah, it was. Because I remember I was filming yeah. and it came pretty yeah. close to the camera. And the only one I can remember on target was Cody McDonald's header from Ryan Jackson's Cross. I don't remember the other two. I don't remember anything else. I'm trying not to remember anything from this season, to be quite frank. But. Um, Anyway, we, we sort of digressed a little bit there. Um, we've made some notes. Um, I thought on the whole, and I don't know what you think, again, it might come back to them being, because they were so 
comfortable or just like you say, just playing out an end of the season game in the, in the sunshine. I thought we actually looked quite solid defensively with a, with a back four. Um, I thought Amar and Deji were decent enough. They, they, they won most things in the air. Um, granted, the, the centre forward that played 75 minutes was like knee eye to a grasshopper. But I don't think we've done a lot wrong. And we'll come on to them in a little while, but obviously, like AD Pennant has mentioned about a gajillion times after that's it, it had nil nil written all over it. Um, we said, didn't we? With fifteen minutes to go, we're taking a draw. We're set. We just take the clean sheet. And we that take was a it. massive frustration because we was obviously <clears throat> we're looking at the table throughout the game. All fans are because we're desperate to see how Port Vale and Shrewsbury were getting on. They both only drew. So if we drawn, the points stay. The gap stays yeah. the same, and we've ticked another game off. So their chances of going above us are, are reducing because of the fact that we keep getting rid of games. Although they've got games in hand. Um, so why didn't we just go and try and win the football match? Why didn't we just show a little this. bit of bottle? Because bottle. You, you can't keep relying on other teams. No. You know, if we go down, we're not going to say, oh, it's because Port Vale and Shrewsbury picked up wins. No, exactly. It's like you, you see it in the Premier League when um, like the big sides, the TV4 or whatever you want to call them, they rotate their teams when they've got nothing to play for in the league and they've got like a big Champions League tie. And then some other manager will come out and go, oh, it's unfair because they lost to our rivals and we got beat... Um, that's because Man United or whoever yeah, no, rested it's all their players. Right. It's not their fault. They can do what they like. That's their club. That's their prerogative to go and rest their players if they've got a game that's more important in their eyes. We've got to get enough points ourselves. Every game for us now is important, but we're just not fighting. We're not showing no nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Bottle. We just said bottle. We have none of it. We have absolutely nothing. It says here, this is the back page of today's Medway Messenger. We're still fighting. That's what Aidan Pennock, our leader, our manager, has come out and said. We haven't showed any fight for 40 games. We've just rolled over for the majority of them. Um, we've just worked it out. We've taken 15 points from 15, 15 games, games under Pennant. That's 46 points in a season. What does that equal? For all you lovers out there that are all blocking me and unfollowing me on Twitter because you're getting a little bit precious and a little bit uptight because we're slagging off your mate. That's relegation fault. We can sit here and pretend and dress it up, sugarcoat it and do whatever you want so that your mate AD looks all right. 46 points gets you relegated every single season. Doesn't it? So, but ironically, we've just worked it out. If we take a point a game for the last six, we'd probably stay up. That gives us 51 points. That's how desperate we are. So, we just, we just worked out the difference, haven't we? So, that means we under just Justin for the first 30 games, uh, 25, 25 games of the season, we took 30 points. 1.2 points per game gives you 55. We stay up. And then people will go, well, um, Hindsight, blah, blah, blah. Should have exactly. kept Justin. No, it was rubbish, have kept absolute Justin rubbish. The, the aim when Justin Edinburgh was in charge was to get in the playoffs because we'd signed championship quality players. That's what everyone kept telling us when Lee Martin and Scott Wagstaff and Joe Emmanuel Thomas and Jamie O'Hara and Paul Koncheski all pitched up in the summer. Where have they all gone? Pellock's got rid of three of them. I've repeated, I've said this on previous blogs on here. We're such a disaster that we've signed a player that couldn't actually play for us because we didn't know the rules. Bonds and Gala. We signed a midfielder to a load of fanfare. Oh, ex-Tottenham, played in a League Cup final a few years ago. Played 40 times in a championship last season for Fulham. Ended up in a big brother house. Paul Koncheski. Oh, he was in Leicester's squad last season, technically, and they won the Premier League. And he was on loan and played 40 games at QPR in a championship. He's, and he's played for England. He's playing for Billericay now. But ironically, we need a left back, and Pennant thought it was a great idea to get rid of him when our only other left back's been injured all season. So it's just disaster, 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 disaster all the time. And it makes you wonder why Pennant thought they were all big names. Pennant got rid of them. So why do you well, think he's got I, rid of them? Like I said to you before, I think it's wages. I think he's coming and thought, how can I shake this squad up? And he needs money to do it. So if he's sending Jet back, all right, we're now find out we're paying his money still. But if we're still paying him. Up to the playoff should, final. Yeah, up to the playoff How final. hilarious. <clears throat> if we're still paying him, we should be playing him. If he's got rid to free up funds, 100% go for I it. I said that. No, if, no if, if, he's, that. if he's being paid till the end of the season, why didn't we keep him? Because, and it's again, it's benefits of hindsight and stuff like that. But we said the other day, he was our top scorer when he left. And all right, he was an absolute nightmare. But who did we replace him with? Joe Quigley. Quigley. Uh, to be fair to Quigley, you know, we, we said... Southend was very good since then. He's dropped off, but this is a guy who's been 
Shouldn't what, again. Six, seven six months, months out injured. Pretty fair play to work hard. Ninety minutes. It's, it's not fair to a kid. And then, but then again, the irony is that he's he's been called up to his country. So we're all sitting here going, he's been bang average, hasn't scored a goal for us, and that earns him an international call up. So we lost him again. <laughs> so, and then Josh Parker, there's another one. Josh Parker scores last week in a 4 1 battering where we get absolutely tanked out by, side, by a team that hadn't scored uh, one for 10 games. What happened Saturday? He's on the bench. And who do we bring in? Rory Donnelly, one goal all season, hasn't played for the best part of a month because he's done his ankle in a home game. <coughs> And then we find out he's got conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis. And that, that's contagious. While Donnelly's being picked for the squad, by the way, Nolan Bow was playing for the youth team again. And scored. When, if Donnelly's got that, he shouldn't be in the squad full stop. You start Parker. You that should be Bowen in quarantine, surely. He should be nowhere near the team. Nowhere near any of them. That are, so what if... Um, <laughs> this is going to sound really horrible. Roy Donnelly goes down first half, running towards the town end. I don't know, trips over his own feet he can't see or something ridiculous. Because I, I do sound ridiculous, but we are ridiculous, unfortunately. Now, we are an absolute joke. A shambles of a football club from top to bottom at the moment. So he falls over, hits the deck. Second half, Oli Muldoon's skating around like Bambi on ice, trying to pick up four-foot Marais. Falls over, face plants the deck. Lands in the same bit. He gets it. Fingers crossed after that performance. but And that's, that's far-fetched and that's ridiculous. But... If that had happened to us. You know, well, if we heard Donnelly was going to be back involved, brilliant, it's numbers. You know, we need bodies this time of the season, but... He's got one eye. Yeah, if he's been out for a month and he can't see... <laughs> and he doesn't score. Doing? He doesn't score goals. What, he's got one all season. What does that say to Josh Parker? Absolutely. He hasn't done an awful lot wrong on the pitch, to be fair. Well, no, he's been, he's been all right. And then, to, to compound that, he brings on Harry Cornick first, and plays, who's a winger, we got told... Oh, he's a winger. It's gonna, it's gonna so get where did he play when he come on? Up front. So exactly. we had another. So we've gone from square pegs to round holes to triangular pegs, hexagon holes. We're running out of holes. No wonder Scott Wagstaff went over and um, done his ankle first half. There's so many holes on that pitch. It's ridiculous. You know, and Scott Wagstaff is the one player this season who I feel bad for because he would have been sold a lot in the summer. He would have been told you're going to come in, you're going to play on the wing, promotion push. He's played everywhere but on the wing. He's been but he's injury prone again. He's he not is, injury prone. You're playing him in and out. He, he never quite got a fix. We've always rushed him back, which yep. is go, similar to Garmson. I said that before. Garmson, yep. you keep rushing him back. You're not giving these players time to recover. Jackson, when Jackson's fit, he's good enough. But he hasn't been fit for a long time now because we've got no one else. So he, wasn't, as, he wasn't 100% fit Saturday. No, so as soon different. as he's fit enough to be in the 18, he's in. So we replaced an unfit. So you never given him a chance to recover. We play, replaced an unfit winger playing right back with an unfit right back who's played centre half for the last month before he got injured. Therein lies the problem. Every time, everything we talk about, people. If, if I was a fan of another football club, and I come on here and watched us talking, or listen to Last Walk's blog, or listen to Lewis White Brown Lions football, good. Lewis's one, which is decent, we watched that again. I think I've wet myself. It we must, are an it must absolute be to be an joke of a football team. club. An absolute joke. I don't, I, I'm running out. We still haven't sworn, which is absolutely incredible. Um, because when we launched this site, we said we wouldn't, just in case kids are watching. But it's very, very hard to do it, isn't it? I'm not sitting here... There's a lot of tongue whining going on. Um, and like Saturday, we had like kids in front of us. They shouldn't have been sitting there. You was, oh, I'm, I'm not going to swear, because... I've tried yeah. to hold it back, yeah. I mean, you can't, because this team, it just does it to you. This football club at the moment, it just does it to you. Um... What we got else? What else in the rest of this midway mess? Sorry, I'm just, I'm almost speechless, which you know is hard for me, to be honest. Oh, there's at the top, this Jill's chairman urges supporters to back stadium plans. You you text me this morning. Get your text out quickly, mate. You've sent me, you, Boz has got a cracking analogy. I don't know why I did that. I'm just all over it. This is ridiculous. I'm not entirely sure I've worded it right, but you, you'll get the point. So... If you're sat, if you're sat indoors and you're thinking, so this is regarding us and our stadium yeah, plans, because, and our wonderful new facility, you know, I've and been the fact that we've got a shoddy. Fifteen first years I've been going, and I've been hearing this stadium plan since day one. Right? Well, that's before you as well, mate. I heard yeah. it in '99, and Scully admitted that that he'd sent out a publication 17 years ago. So it's pie in the sky, effectively. So if you're sat down and you're thinking, oh, I want to buy a house, so I'm going to buy a new car, you don't, you know, you can sit there and think, yeah, in the future that'd be nice. It look nice, you know, do it up. That's all well and good. But you have to start planning and saving and putting the wheels in the motion. You don't just, you know, just because you want it 
it doesn't mean it's going to happen. No. You know, you have to, and to, to turn it back to football, if you're going to do it, you need to start, to get people in, you need a competitive team. And we're not competitive. So it's all right and giving away free, free tickets and saying, oh, well, you know, with seven, 8,000. You don't get free tickets out. What are we, we doing what, to get people what in? We have, what's our average attendance? We, we touched on this the other day. What's our average attendance? 5,000? Yeah, around 5,000. It'll drop next season when we're in 100%. League 2. It'll be 4,000, 4 and a half. Um, Darlington, prime example. Yeah. Built a massive stadium. What is it now? It's overgrown, I think. And it, I know their chairman was an absolute crook, but... Um, but you don't, you don't have to have these big stadiums. Look, Fulham's not a lot bigger than ours. Who else? MK Dons? Yeah. They're what, look at four teams points that have been above in the Premier League and You don't need... Blackpool, now League 2, If you're competing Portsmouth. at the top, you know, and you're regularly challenging, 100% go for it. But let's concentrate on what's important. Let's not look 10 years go. in the future about so how So to back up your example perfectly... How much does the Vitality Stadium hold? Bournemouth, 11,000. It ain't no different go. to us. It looks like Stop our saying. ground. Yeah. And where are they? Premier League. And this comes back to you, Paul, and all your all path to the Premier League and all your dreams and your, your aspirations and your ambition and your last paragraph in that eight-page publication letter last week was um, we have to believe to achieve. 48 hours later, you confirmed that we was having a non-league manager for the next season regardless, pretty much. So... Um, the players should Board be reading it. that, believe to Bored of listening to it. Bored of listening to just absolute rubbish and nonsense, thinking that we're all stupid and that we're all just going to sit here. Some will, because all the happy clappers that love AD Pennant for what he did as a player, and I do, and so do you. But that doesn't mean we have to sit here and accept this rubbish um, and go, oh yeah, AD Pennant was great as a player, so that means he's a good football man. Because it's not happening. Andy Hessenthaler was a brilliant footballer for Gillingham Football Club. Couldn't, Couldn't get us out of League 2. And people will go, oh yeah, well he was he finished um, two yeah, seasons in a row as our highest positions in the championship. So that's two of our highest positions ever. That was that, that was Tony Pulis and Peter Taylor's team. So don't sit there and pretend that was Andy Essen Taylor's team. Go, going back to that start as well. That's when the um, that's when the negative started because we had an aging team then. You know, your, your Hesses, your Smiths, your Southalls, your Ashbys, they were all getting old together. But as Pennock. But we never replaced them. No, they all, and they all retired at the right. same time. So we let them, when we did go down, they were all in the squad and they were all you know, towards the end of their careers. We then had to start again. If you're in a championship and you're planning and you've got, I don't know how old they were, 33, 34, Ashby and Butters and whatever, you need to start replacing. You need to start thinking, you know, now you're thinking about the future. Maybe you should Alex back Ferguson, then. United, when he used to fade a couple out every season, bring yeah. in the youngsters. The only time he didn't really do it was his last season because he was retiring. He probably... that, that season we went down and we had lots of the older players. How many young players were in that team? Matt Jarvis, Jason Brown. Crofts, I don't think Crofts was a regular then. Exactly, but there was they weren't. There was no, was there was no replacements. There was yeah, no blend. There was no proper blend. Yeah. You didn't have anything to help them out. Um, and then this, we go back to this thing again about jobs for the boys and all his mates. Steve Lovell's come back about a million times. Club legend. Andy Essenthal come back about a million times. Club legend. Aidy Pennock, club legend. You talking about them seasons when we started drifting from the championship back to League One and League Two pretty quickly. Paul Smith come back on loan at, yeah. right at the back end of his career. Bob Taylor came back on loan right at the back end of his career. Bob Taylor didn't score in an 11-game loan period. Paul Smith looked overweight, was not half the player that he was when we first had him. Why do we keep doing this? Why do Paul Scully, why do you keep sitting there thinking, oh, if we're in trouble, we're turned to our mates? What are we going to do next season? Oh, Ron, Ron Iliard, we've got a couple of goalkeepers in you. Can you come and play for us? It's ridiculous. And again, well, it's... I sounds... mention that. Ian Cox over the weekend, that was mentioned... <laughs> Ian Cox. Genuinely that was not a joke. That was not a joke. Before it was a joke. Because you read the way it read was Paul Scully saying it, but then he had to confirm no, that Adrian Pennant, Pennant turned down the option. We're a liability. We're an absolute liability, and you ain't going to get many season ticket holders next season, Mister Scully. If you think this is the way forward, if you seriously think this is the way to the Premier League or the Championship, or even halfway up the League One at the moment, because. We haven't got a side fit to compete in this division, and yet you're jabbering on and writing this absolute nonsense about getting into the Premier League, and you tell us to believe in this and that, and you do nothing, absolutely nothing, to, to back up them words at all. And I've sat here for donkey's years, and I've said, Paul Scully has done a lot of good for this football club, and I said this again on Twitter yesterday to someone, we would not exist if it wasn't for Paul Scully. But that was in 1995. So all you that are going to come on here or go on Twitter and unfollow me and block me because I'm fed up with what's happening in the here and now and go, well, it was a lot worse 500 million years ago. 
And it was a lot better 18 months ago. Wasn't it? Because for 80% of last season, we genuinely thought we could win the league. We genuinely thought we could get in the playoffs. We genuinely thought we could get in the championship. And we said on the way home, on a match day live, Nelson was on the bench on Saturday. Who started? Uh, Deji, Max Amar, Ryan Jackson came on. Uh, in midfield, we had... Dak, Wright. Bradley Dak, Josh Wright, Cody McDonald up front. Who was on the bench? Hess, Osa Davey. They were all here last season when we overachieved and finished ninth, which was our highest position for Christ knows how long. So what's gone horribly wrong? Because there's not a great deal of difference between the Justin Edinburgh reign and the Adrian Pennant reign. It's 0.2 of a point per game. Fed up with it. Absolutely fed up to the back teeth of it. I think we all are. And then we have to be told that we've got to keep quiet because we're not backing the manager. I back the manager every single time I turn up to that stadium or we travel away. And I cheer them on and I encourage... I don't boo during the game because it's not helpful. It's not helpful to anyone. But it doesn't mean I'm going to sit here off, off air or off, on air on these blogs or on Twitter and have an opinion after a game just because it was worse than this in 1970 or whatever or 1980 something or 1993. Couldn't give a toss about then. This is about here and now. And as it stands, we are getting relegated and chances are we won't come straight back up because we're employing a non-league football manager to do a job in the football league. You go down to League 2, right? And they're all big, bustly strikers. They're all big, you know, they're lumps. We they'll, can roll over and die. Kick, yeah, you know, they'll kick you silly, yeah? Yep. How many players in this team can take that? None of them. They're all pretty. They're all horrible. Exactly. They're not or, or, they will uh, get battered in them too. They, they will get sit there. It's nice when we've got 15 minutes with a ball. Oh, yeah, we can have a touch. We'll have a look up. We can pass it. We can give it... No minerals. I've said it for weeks. No minerals at all. No mineral In either box. AD said it. We're not ruthless enough in either box. We're not ruthless enough full stop, AD. It's, it's rubbish, absolute rubbish. Right, we're just going to uh, try and finish the paper review now because obviously you've all seen that I've gone off on one a little bit there and Boz remained slightly more reserved than me. Um, so we did stop and had a break in filming. Um, Boz was probably slightly more reserved because you couldn't get word in it. It's <laughs> blessing because I just went on to... I did warn you all, in, in fairness, in my defence, I did say this is going to go full ramp mode. Um, we're just finishing the paper review briefly because we all know what it is. It's absolute depressing. Relegation is looming large. Um, I'm not going to read the full match report. Um, the final paragraph for us sums it up, doesn't it? Boos at the final whistle showed what they thought and Mr Scully can't have been impressed either. Three wins from 15 is relegation form. And Saturday's performance was relegation football. So again, it comes back to everyone who wants to sit here and defend A.D. Pennock. And I gave him a chance when he arrived. Lots of people said it wasn't the right appointment. Boz was one of them. He was massively underwhelmed. I said, hey, let's give him a chance and try to remain positive. It hasn't worked. So why would I sit here and just lie and pretend that it's working when it ain't? Because bottom line, Adrian Pennock can be the biggest club legend in the world. But the old saying, he's not bigger than this football club. And I care more about this football club than I do the reputation of an old player, to be quite frank. Um, I'm going to ask you, because I don't want to start going off on one again, because I can feel the, the vein in my forehead about to pop. Um, how do we move forward? We've got six games to try and give us some sort of hope and crumb of comfort. And I can't give a lot. There's not a lot, but... We sat here last week and said our best chance... Is our home games, and you said Peterborough is the one, probably the most winnable one. And now I go to MK Dons on Saturday, where <clears throat> I think they've picked up recently, haven't they? I'm not sure in terms of, they um, drew with Port Vale, didn't they, at the weekend? So that was a, but, they're, they're, but again, it was a, a, probably a game that should have been nil-nil, and both teams ensured it was nil-nil, so they both did their job and picked up their point, whereas, as you labelled us a little earlier, generous Gillingham decided to... And the three points, give the three points away. But I, um, I can't see where it's going to turn around. <clears throat> People are saying, oh, we had, we had the three wins. You know, we had Southend, Scunthorpe, Berry, but they were all, like, not lucky is the wrong word, isn't it? But, do you know what I mean? We didn't well, deserve. Yes and, yeah, we did. Um, Berry, it was Nelson, wasn't it? Kept us in it. Southend was his first win, wasn't it? I'm sure there was a Josh Wright penalty in that. Yeah, there was. There was a penalty. Almost for an And a red card that, when looking back at it afterwards, looked really soft. Ryan Innes. Um, and we still nearly threw that away. We was turning yeah. up at half-time against 10 men, and then we sat back. Which we said at the time was understandable, because we hadn't won for Christ knows how long. Yeah, we were just desperate for a win. And, but we got over the line, and at the time we thought, excellent, excellent. We, we might have sort of turned a corner or whatever. And then we went to Bury, I think, the week later, didn't we? Yeah, I think we got back, back to back wins. Minutes, um, scraped it. Nelson was brilliant that day. Um, 
Obviously, we all know he got dropped at the weekend, but he was very good that day from what we read and the highlights and what we'd spoken to people about who went to the game. Um, it was comfortable. It was, it, was, it was wonderful and exciting and brilliant. And Scumble will be the game that will be remembered about this season, but let's not lie, it was rubbish until the penalties. We were cack. We were absolute cack for 75 minutes. If we were devoid of ideas it, again. We were you imagine being on the receiving you imagine being them Scumfort fans going home, you feel robbed. And as, as good as Nelson was against Berry, he was the complete polar opposite that day. He was massively at fault for both goals. And again, people are sitting here and going, oh, Stuart Nelson's a club, isn't he? Oh, that's all right then, so he can just I let two through his legs. Like, but... You know, he's, he's at the end. He's coming towards the end. Let's be honest, and and, and we've I, said. I hope he hangs around the club when he goes. So, but... Plenty of time. He probably still wants to play. I, <coughs> I can see him going to a league. Well, <laughs> he's going to go to League Two club. Might stay, but um, you know what I mean. Um, he he, he was thirty five. We said didn't we a few weeks ago, like you know, big things that led to Hadler. Obviously, Holy's coming on a long term deal. Yes, yeah, so the contract says that he's going to be number where one next we've season. We've already made a decision. Yeah. yeah and him and, and then Hadler will compete again. So, or we might get another one in. And but I think. Stuart Nelson has he got a contract he's got another year I'm sure he signed the two last year so but there's always you can always get that sorted out I mean you have to look at like higher up the, the football pyramid Wayne Rooney it looks like they're going to write off the last year of his contract so he can go back to Everton so they might do that with Stuart Nelson and I'd have no qualms about that not because I don't like Stuart Nelson but because he's been a great servant and he deserves to play football games I, I said at this stage to you uh, last season the uh, season four we had Glenn Morris as well yeah. and there was talk one's going to go one's going to stay I said if Morris is the one to stay let Nelson go because he's done that much for the club. Yeah, don't make him sit on the bench. He deserves better than just be yeah, sat on the bench, don't, don't just, just wasting his time. Yeah, no, so just let him go and play go. football because he's, he's he's not got long left. I'm sure of that. So um, maybe that was the one positive in the performance of the keeper. I thought Thomas Holy was one was very good save. Pretty yeah, the one I think it was Madison when yeah. it's second half when he he sort of went he couldn't quite get it with the first hand and he's had to go up. With the, with the wrong end I mean I'm not goalkeeper coach but it was a very good save bottom line and he had no chance with the goal um, a couple of kicks early on he looked a little bit nervous but after that he was generally solid he, he claimed crosses he come out he bossed his area I think he punched a couple away um, did nothing wrong um, he got man of the match in the, the Medway Messenger I mean I know that's probably not a great reference considering our performance again but he was one bright spot in a very dull afternoon um, I don't think there's a lot more to say. We've, um, I've done my rant. I've calmed down a little bit. I'm pretty sure the blood pressure's dropped a little bit. Um, my tea's cold. Um, so is, is MK Don's now our most winnable game? And anything you take now from any of the games is going to be a positive. So what? <coughs> we, so we're going MK Don's Saturday. I oh, was out on a Monday draw. I, I, I can't see it. I'd love a. I'd take a draw. I can't see us getting anything home to Millwall. No, no. Hate them, love them, whatever. So chances are, if we lose both of them, by the time Port Vale and Shrewsbury might have played their games in hand by then, I don't, I've not looked at the fixtures. I don't know when they are. They're not this week, in midweek. So if they're next, next uh, Tuesday or something, then invariably we could be in the bottom four and they could still have a game in hand each or have played the same games. And we've said plenty of times, if we drop below that line, there is absolutely no chance for me I don't know what you think. No. We will not come back out because we do not have enough about us. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, till next time, up the jewels.